Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm with Marina Francis, and we're going to talk about having a healthier relationship with food. Marina, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks, George. I'm so happy to be here with you right now. Yeah. So let me just kind of share with the audience a bit of your, your bio, uh, and then we'll get into the conversation. So uh, Marina Francis, you've been working on uh, these kinds of, uh, you've, been, you've been empowering smart, heartfelt women um, to find their own empowered answers to food for the last 23 years. Uh, you have a, a bunch of certifications, um, like from the Institute of Psychology of Eating, um, from the Hendricks Institute. Uh, let's see, you're, you're a level three EFT practitioner. So there's a lot of training you bring and, and a lot of experience. So, uh, and one of the things that you say in, in your bio is, you know, kind of smart, you know, intelligent women. Um, that you that you really focused on helping so tell us why intelligent women um well first of all i'm curious why why just women why not men yeah. have these issues too as i know <laughs> yeah thanks for thanks for asking yeah. that i get that um and and i do work with men and <clears throat> i love working with men typically because the masculine and feminine brains work a bit differently and there's there's some fascinating science on that um for women everything tends to be connected. So um, food is, is a bit more of an all-encompassing invitation into growth. For, I just find for more women than for men, and I do work with men and I love to work with men. I work with men a bit differently, um, and often it can be a bit more linear, a bit more focused, because you guys, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't already know about yourself, but you're very good. The masculine energy is really good at focused at action at compartmentalizing and women. So I think about that, like men are the, are the ship that, that knows, that knows how to go. Women are the ocean. And so we got to have both, you know, we all have both, but for women, because that's true, the, the relationship with food like spokes out of a wheel and affects many different areas of life. And I'll talk, you know, a little bit more about that as we go and specific to business women and entrepreneurs. Mm. So, so yeah, let's, let's actually get into this um, discussion regarding, regarding women since it's a lot of your focus. Why yeah. isn't it, why isn't it working uh, for women and, and why? It, it, so much of it is, I, you know, I laugh about this, but um there's a lot of old school stuff that really smart women are still doing. There's something like, you know, um, kind of uh, the definition of insanity being doing the same things and expecting different results. And so, for example, um, some women are counting calories. Some women are imagining that paleo is going to be the end all and be all or vegan. And and not to discount the power and the viability of those. I definitely work with people around specific diets and, and the, the science and the practice of nutrition, but without actually understanding, oh, who am I as an eater right now at this particular point in my life? All of that stuff um, isn't sustainable. So what, when, we're, when I talk about what's typically not working is, um, control, willpower, um, the judgment of ourselves that we might have. And, and I know you've, you've talked about this too, um, as you have tweaked your diet and tweaked some of your eating habits and patterns like, oh, well, what to really feel in to what's working for me right now and why. And in order to find that, we have to get really clear on what isn't working and why that is. And so for women, there's very often an emotional component with this. And what's fascinating to me about food is food, if you think about it as humans, it's one of the only substances we can get really out of balance with that we actually still need to live, right? Like we don't need um, tobacco or the best red wine on the planet or, or heroin or any of that. Like we, we don't need those to live. We do need food. And so it's in a category all its own. And to me, that makes it, uh, it, it gives it opportunities all its own too. Yeah. So if, you know, and a, 
an ideal client right now is watching this and she's like, yeah, I, I have tried willpower. I have tried different diets yeah. uh, and, you know, blaming myself or whatever. And it hasn't worked. Yes. And I yeah. continue to have uh, a less than healthy relationship or I, I would like to improve my relationship with food. So what, what can we do? What, what, what can that person do? Yeah. Well, in, in a, in a very simple way, um, one of the things that, that is so powerful. Um, so instead of control, um, forcing ourselves to eat this and not eat that instead of judgment, when maybe we do eat this and we don't eat that when we, when we want to do better for ourselves, instead of that judgment and that like it's a quality of hardness in the body you know judgment and control are both they're both locking down and closing and so we really want to do the opposite of that and and like open up the periphery of that and say like all right instead of judging myself what if i wonder what if i just really wonder oh why why is it that i want to eat the second brownie at the potluck. I was at a great potluck yesterday, so that, that one just showed up. Um, and just being in the dynamic of watching everybody and having fun. So why? Why is it, say for example, a sensitive, um, a highly sensitive woman who might be a bit of an introvert eat a second or a third brownie at a potluck where she's she's with people that she's enjoying? Maybe she's um not feeling confident that day. Maybe she had a hard conversation with someone this morning. Um, so all of this stuff comes into the mix. So when people, especially women, talk about emotional eating, I, I say, great, we're emotional creatures. And of course, we carry that into the act of eating and nourishing ourselves like what could be more normal than that right so one of the one of the early things that i teach all my one-on-one -on -one clients is how can you be that emotional creature that you are how can you really bring that and celebrate that in your life and have a really healthy nourishing relationship with food at the same time because i think a lot of people think it's got to be one or the other if i'm if i'm really emotionally charged right now because of that thing that happened this morning or yesterday or that hard thing i'm going into later um I'm going to overeat or I'm going to eat things that numb me out or that I need to, I need to sort of run away from. So instead is how do we bring that? Like, how do we, how do we bring that to the party? Use it for a, a really clean, powerful fuel, step into our own power with, because now we're in alignment, you know, and, and alignment is is power it's it's a personal sovereignty so when we talk about women in business um i'll just give you a little example so this morning it, right before you and i got on here to um have our interview together i noticed that i was a little afraid you know and my 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 belly was contracted and then my breathing was a little shallow and i was about to have my breakfast and and so preparing preparing everything and realize in that moment we have a we have a, a choice every time we sit down to eat anything we have these beautiful choices and so in that moment i chose to climb back into my body and and really feel and really presence oh i have some fear I'm not going to do the interview right. I'm going to forget to say some really important things. And so I just, just took a couple of rests. So it didn't take any more like clock time than I already had planned. But I just became a different person in those few minutes before and while eating my breakfast. Like, okay, this is how I feel. Like just allow all of that. Welcome all of that. And the fascinating thing about that there's there's hard science on this now there's a better nutritional uptake there's a better scanning for macro and micronutrients there and so that's an awesome thing because um what that means is if we're running through the airport and we're rushed and we have to eat some junk food because we're getting on the next flight if we can do that in a relaxed embodied way we'll actually get more nutrition from that 
Conversely, we can eat the most beautiful organic food on the planet for a meal. And if we're eating it from a place of stress and hurriedness and mental or even physical crowdedness, we will not uptake the nutrition that's actually available in that food. So I consider that great news because it, it, it just offers us a world of possibilities. Wow. That's amazing. That's really cool. I was, um, I was, I was laughing a little bit when you said earlier, Oh, at a, at a potluck and eating that second brownie. I'm like, well, I would do it cause it's free food. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's free. <laughs> Only eat more. Right. No, yeah. um, yeah. everybody has their own thing. No. Um, well, yeah. And that's about, and, and there's history there sometimes too. Yeah. So a lot of what I'm doing with clients is we're taking a look, you know, not a big wallowing, but, a, but a look at what's the history there. You know, so like, I know you didn't, but you might have grown up with eight brothers and sisters. And so like, oh, it's free food. I better eat what I can yeah. while I can. Yeah. You know? all kinds yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, growing up, you know, in school, when there's like goodies at school or something like that, it's like, oh, everyone's grabbing it. Well, I better yeah. grab an extra one or something. Yeah. But um, so uh, I love this idea and this, you know mindful eating brings more nutrition into our bodies. So how do we eat more mindfully, especially, uh, well, we're going into the holidays, as we're recording is going into the holidays. So there's a yeah. lot of food involved yeah. in holidays, but, but just any time in the year, I mean, we're eating multiple times a day. So how yeah. do we, how do we eat, uh, the next meal more mindfully? The next meal. Yeah. And it's beautiful that you're saying that because the cool thing about food is we have an opportunity to practice this yeah. anytime we propose to put something in our mouths. And so I use the word practice intentionally and often because in the same way that we practice a sport or a musical instrument or yoga, um, we don't call that a perfect. We're always calling that a practice. And so to understand and to recognize that every day is different. And back to control for a minute, if I say to myself like, okay, this is the amount of uh, yogurt you eat every morning, and this is how many eggs you can have a week. And the, that, that's, I'm not taking into account my level of activity, what, what I'm dealing with emotionally that week. Do I have to travel? Did I just do a marathon? Did, you know, all those things. And so what, I, what I'm teaching, I think the most important thing that I'm teaching women is how do you know for yourself right now in your life the perfect way to eat and how can you take what we learn together in our bit of focused work over usually several months time how do we take that and how do you take that forward sustainably so that you will always be able to discover for yourself what is my perfect way to eat right now am i am i wanting a maintenance diet because things are pretty well do i have some things to heal do i need to create a therapeutic diet for myself am i an active athlete that's a different thing and so there's a beautiful way of untangling um the whole nutritional confusion and the good and the bad and the right or wrong through this method so let me give you just a a, a simple set of practices that i use in fact, my, my example about, you know, eating breakfast this morning, this is what I was doing. Basically, it's, it's built into my, into my body now. I don't do it perfectly. I don't do it 100%, but it's a thing that is a touchstone. And I'll teach it to you so that, you know, it's just always a thing we can come back to. So the very first one is when we're eating, whenever is, you know, as much as possible to really to eat. And so that means um, not scrolling Facebook, not reading, um, not uh, writing our notes or even looking over our notes about what are we doing this afternoon. It's, it's literally and energetically squaring ourselves up to the table, putting our feet on the floor, taking a couple of really beautiful intentional breaths so that we can get physically and energetically present to what we're about to do, which is hopefully nourish our body in the best way that we know how, given the circumstances and what's available to us right now. So 
the other part is, and I think I, I spoke about this already, doing that allows our, our bodies and our psyche and our brain to scan for macronutrients too. So if you've ever had the experience and a hundred percent of people that I've asked this is that, Oh yeah, that's happened. I've looked down and thought, wow, where did my dinner go? I was enjoying talking to you so much, for example. Um, and so if we're not present, it's really easy to overeat. You know, even when we are in a positive frame of mind and having a great time with our friends or our family, it's not always when there's an emotionally challenging thing going on and I'm opening the refrigerator to numb myself out from what I don't want to feel. So it can be a, a really broad spectrum there. So getting physically and energetically present, taking those few breaths, just going inside, just checking out like, oh, how do I feel right now? So another way I could say that is finding out in that moment, who's the eater? Who's the eater? So we talk all the time about what we're eating and we rarely talk about who, who am I being right now? So in the same ways that you, George, talk about how do we show up for ourselves in our businesses so that we can serve the tribe that we're meant to serve, it's, it's, it's an adjunct of the same thing. You know, who, you know, because who are we being in, in our eating also drives the powerful decisions so that we can eat as a full expression of who we want to be and how we want to show up in the world. Mm. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you a question. You, you mentioned a couple of times about scanning for macronutrients when we're doing mindful eating. What do you mean by, by that? Yeah, it's a very automatic thing. It's not even a thing that the brain needs thought for. When we become more present in our bodies and we slow everything down just enough, it doesn't have to even take longer than the amount of time that we are already eating. It just takes attention and awareness. So those couple of breaths, those squaring ourselves up, those looking, looking down and appreciating the meal that you're about to eat because you've never had this meal before. Even you may have eaten the, those foods before, but we've never been in this moment with this meal in, in this body, in this breath right now. So it's an opportunity to take in something really new and fresh and to appreciate that. So all by doing that, our, our, we, by our slowing down that, um, we, we are automatically physiologically scanning for nutrients more than if we're checked out and we're doing this and we're doing that and I've got my phone and you know. So somehow the body is actually more, uh, more uh, absorbing of mm -hmm. good things when yeah. we're yeah. mindfully eating. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. As, as well as the acknowledgement of like, oh, I just ate a really satisfying meal or oh, yes. I do actually need a little bit more. I am mm -hmm. still a little bit hungry. Right, right. We have That's a better right. capacity to find out the answers to those things. Right, yeah. Or like, oh, I'm done. I thought I prepared this, yes. but I'll save this for and, later or something. And how do I know that? Yeah, yeah, so those decisions start taking on a, what I call a neck down quality and not mm -hmm. a neck up because this is the part that doesn't work so mm -hmm. well when we're proposing to eat in, in better ways for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the old school. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's wrap up by sharing yeah. with people how people, how, how those who are watching can work with you. Um, you love working with clients. So tell us about what that's like. Yeah, I really do. I mean, these days, the bulk of my practice is one-on-one um, -on -one work with, you know, for, for, for deep dive, nourishing, focusing uh, on all of this. And what's so interesting is that it's very far reaching. Um, and so I always joke about, it looks like it's about the food, but it is never only about the food. And there, there are beautiful other things that uh, are calling to be learned through this doorway of food. And I love anybody who's nodding their head right now as you're hearing this or reading what George is posting. Um, it's such an honor to be part of this tribe along with you. And if this intrigues you, um, the way you can learn more, the link is here in the comments. Um, go in, fill out my very short little form. It's attached to the consultation and I will gift you with um, a, a nice 30 minute um, session 
for you as a fellow heartfelt entrepreneur. And that's just uh, marinafrancis.com forward slash consultation. And it's, as I say, it's here in the links. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, that's easy. It's www.marinafrancis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, Marina, M-A-R-I-N-A, marinafrancis.com slash consultation. Yes. And that's for anybody who mentions my name, you get a free uh, consult. Um, I should mention that Marina is a, is a yeah. yeah, a free session. Yeah. And I should mention Marina is a client of mine and that, you know, love working with her. Um, so, you know, if, if this has, if, if you feel like, yes, I could, I could, I would benefit from a, from a more healthy and mindful relationship to my food, then get that session with Marina. I think you'll be uh, grateful for it. Marina, thank you so much for, for, for doing this. And is there any kind of words of wisdom to, to send us off with? Uh, one, one word, um, especially as we're coming into the holidays here, um, relax. Relax, relax yeah, into nice. yourself. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Thank you so much, Marina. Mm -hmm. Great to see you as always, George. Thanks.